What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Captain's Cove. I'm here with Spitfire. Hey. Well, that was a massive introduction, and we are talking about yes. <laughs> FPS games, and not just uh, not just modern FPS games, but I, I think we should I think we should go back in time to like the first FPS games. Yeah, definitely. So, speaking of which, what's your favorite FPS game? My favorite. Mm hmm. Ooh, that's a hard one. Mm. Uh, I, I'd have to say probably Team Fortress, since it's the one I put the most hours in. Like, the two, not the original. And, like, even though it's gone to shit now, back when it was, like, back in its day, like, everyone played it. At least everyone I knew. And I, I think it did a lot for the genre. It's unfortunate how it turned out, but well, it was really good going. It Like, I used to, like, probably last year... And from about three years back to the end of last year, I used to play TF2 almost religiously as, like, uh, Sniper, Heavy, and Spy were my three mains. And fucking, yeah, it got really toxic really quick. It was just a terrible place to be around. Yeah, especially since, like, I don't think, like, personally, I don't think as much as the community is just, like, I felt like Valve kind of up on it and wasn't like it was like they were making it too different so i don't know i, I yeah i i get i i kind of understand where you're going with that but like see i always just played i just quick play i never really searched anything up so i was just always in random matches because that was yeah I, I can never be when it comes to like gaming i can never be asked trying to find a specific lobby unless it's like a survival game and then i'm like i will have that kind of lobby, but in every in any FPS, it's just quick mode, so I can get in and shoot some people. Pretty much my entire premise yeah. behind FPS games. But TF yeah, that, that TF two was an interesting one to choose as a as your favorite. Yeah, it's because like um, it was the first one that like really got me into actual gaming because like before what I played, I was playing like flash gimmicks and things like that i think i had like this one the only the first game i actually downloaded and started playing like maybe like once or twice a week was this plain game called heroes in the sky and then like um i played i got battlefield heroes but like it, it was horrible like, it wasn't horrible but it, it wasn't it was that bad really... no it wasn't that bad actually it's just like i was really bad at it oh yeah and no. all of yeah. my friends pl played like tf2 so like oh get it so I got it, um, and then I, I just loved it to bits, and I played it until, like, last year-ish. Yeah. And like, it, it's not as much as, like, it, I can say, like, oh, it did this very interestingly. It's just, like, based off of feeling. Yeah. Because, it, like, I mean, you, like, you can say, like, oh, this is the most influential one, but for first-person shooters, but, like, you got to think is it in terms of like gameplay, storyline, like mechanics and Well the thing so. is TF2 is actually quite a very influential game when it comes to first person shooters because even though it's you know the original version of it was just a Quake mod for like back when the original Quake was out that you know it was just a mod but if you think about it the T TF2 you play now has got so many game modes in it that are done I'd say, like, they've done 90% correct. So, you know, like, your, your payload mm. escort and all that kind of stuff have done really well. The other games have kind of taken little bits of elements from it and kind of incorporated them into them. Like, like um, with Overwatch, which is not really an FPS, really, but it can... Well, yeah, it kind of yeah. is, but the escort mission on that, so, like, you capture the point and then the thing comes out, that is a mix-up of, of, like, two... You know, it's capture the point and then escort a payload... I've always found that yeah. the escorting part of the payload felt more like TF2 than any other really escort game type from other games that I've ever played. Oh yeah, no, de definitely because like with Overwatch, it's like um, there's gonna be like a certain like I would say even just meta around the payload. Like you might have someone with like a shield or whatever, and then it's like in TF2 you might have like one heavy and his medic defending the payload, and then the enemy team will like to like switch to a classic right yeah and that, that that that's was the nice thing about like payload like once i first got it i barely played payload i just was just like quick match into like whatever i felt like capture the flag or whatever 
and I just play. My friend just told me I'll just play Payload. It, it was really nice because like, it, it it never really got stale, because like you could have like an, an engineer camping, but then like you'd have a spy, and then it like it was just like this big circle of choosing counter for what the enemy team had. Yeah, I I can't see the thing is right when you played when you play every time you and your mates play escort the payload, you instantly know that you'll need a medic. A heavy to deal some damage, uh, like a, a, a side class, so like the sniper or uh, maybe the scout as like, you know, just your random throwaway. And then everyone else will fill the role of like dealing damage from a medium distance and, a clo- and then like yeah. close range. So you immediately know what you need to do. But like the enemy team will be like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go all engineers or all spies or something like that. And it completely throws the way you and your team would like work together so then you have to like kind of flip it up on the on the fly and it kind of makes the game really interesting instead of just being like oh yeah here's uh here's two teams of eight people they've all got assault rifles there you go it's just like call of duty or some shit yeah no i I definitely see what you're saying like um in fact i would say like personally i think that was actually a problem with overwatch it was like it wasn't like because you can like choose many like, you can ch- choose, like, the same, or could you? I don't remember, but there was not really, like, times where you said, like, they'd be, like, oh, all engineers or, like... Yeah, no, we like, Overwatch, it's, like, you've got 24 or 27 heroes and only one person could play as one of them unless you play the game type, uh, I think it's to- Total Mayhem or, like, something where you can all play as the same. So you could you kind of have an entire team of Hanzos playing this one specific yeah. game type, but it was never... It was like a relatively new thing. It was never from the beginning where, you, you know, escort the payload and everybody's like Reinhardt or something. It was never that. It was always yeah. one person could only be one class and that was that. But yeah. TF2, you could just get, you you could go into a game and you're thinking like, right, I'm going to do, I'm going to go scout because he's fast and agile. And then you look at the other team composition, it's nothing but snipers and you're like, well, fuck. Yeah. No, the, the fact that you could like make, um, metas like that if i may say like um i don't know if you've seen like the video but like uh, i know like there's ones of like entire teams going heavy and because like the entire team's going heavy and he put like so many bullets out it's like a steam train right oh yeah and i've seen it, plenty of videos like that it's beautiful yeah it is because like um, i wouldn't say it's like too much team working but like to get everyone to do like this it's quite an accomplishment especially non games yeah, espe- so... especially on TF2. It is, I've found mm-hmm. that it's very hard to get other people to do other things. Like, do it, I did. I, th- I think I did an entire week of what I like to call piss around games where I played heavy and I had, uh, like, the, the Cossack dance, you know, where he's, like, dancing and... He, yeah. Like, yeah, the Russian dance, right? I had that. So I did nothing but that dance through the entire... I fired zero bullets for an entire week because I was just doing that dance and we were on... Uh, I think it's, you know, the one, the fort one with the pool of water and the bridge across it, the two forts, or whatever it's called. Oh, yeah, two forts. Yeah, yeah. I, we were on that, and we were trying to get people to just come and have a party in the sewer. And eventually, after, like, the fifth match, everybody was just dancing. In the, nobody was doing the, the mission. If someone thought they could sneak away and do the mission, everybody, including their team, would, like, try and stop them. And then we'd just go back to dancing. And at some point, we did a conga line for like 45 minutes throughout the match and we just kept this match going just doing nothing but stupidity and then you know someone got the flag and everybody immediately turned on each other and we we're just like fucking die but that's the kind of shit you can't get in like other fps games yeah they're like it's like um it's the friendly um hmm. you'll have I, I, brovies or whatever like you know heavies that just give around sandwiches yeah it, it's the amount of like in- interaction that like of like direct teamwork that you have that you can't get in like Call of Duty and stuff. That's what makes it so fun because you'll have people who like as you said the it's not as much like dicking around. They just don't want to really like just stay with the current you know mission. They want to kind of change things up a bit. Yeah, it's like it's that. normally like, like after you've played for a day or like you've played for a mm-hmm. couple of hours, you're just like you know I just want to play this, but I want to like have a bit of fun while doing it. So either you won't play seriously, or you'll just do you know stupid stuff and try and get other people involved to relax a bit. Yeah. No, no, no definitely. It's, it's something you can't get. In- yeah, it is. It's something you can't get anywhere. Well, 
No, in fact, I won't say it's something you can't get anywhere. I'll say it's something you can't get outside of uh, PC gaming. Yeah, on, on console, like, it's pretty hard to do. Especially because, like, um, I don't think dedicated funds. Usually what people on console, I find what they play, is just, like, to blow off some skin, right? So you just... Yeah, no. They're, uh... they're relaxed at... They're they're relaxed, not as in like to the point of feel like they still want to win and on that that gratification, but they're not like hyper competitive either. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, but... recently I've been playing Fortnite uh, on uh, PS4, and the beginning of the match, like the countdown to the battle bus leaving, everybody's just having a big party and stuff, and, like building and shooting yeah. each other because you can't hurt each other and stuff, or or as I do. Yeah. I do the river dance because I'm English and stuff, and it's pretty funny. So I'm just there doing the river dance, and then in a like in a fifty v fifty battle, which is like something that's not in there at the minute, but in a fifty v fifty battle, there will be like a couple of people on either team who you'll be able to see in the distance, in like when you're building forts and trying to shoot each other, who are just dancing around doing absolutely nothing. And that's that's kind of what I like about Fortnite is it's a game that doesn't fucking take itself seriously at all, but in the process of doing it has become one of the best games on console at the minute and it's it's kind of a strange thing that has happened around like fortnite it's kind of weird yeah fortnite's definitely an outlier like i haven't played it too much because like i don't know i just don't really enjoy the genre personally but like what you say of like um people you know just messing I've i've seen that and i mean like the thing is, because it has, like, such a huge fan base, like, you're more likely to have, like, people who just, like, give, um, who just, like, give other stuff just, you know, for YouTube video or just for satisfaction or who just, like, dance, right? Um, I think that that's something that happens mainly more or less in big games because, you know, you have a bigger community. Yeah, I mean... I don't, uh, with with Fortnite, it it used to be, and I think they've taken this out. You used to be able to on console, uh, if you pressed uh, one of the triggers or the uh, one of the buttons in, it would bring up the ability to go and actually find servers instead of just playing on the on the public stuff. You could go and find servers. I think they've taken that out, but like people would post on uh, Reddit and stuff, the the IP address. You could type in, and it was like it was just friendly servers, so you could go on. Nobody would shoot each other, or like <clears throat> it'd only be specific weapons, or like you could only do stupid stuff. Like you had to stay right next to the edge of the shield, and you had to fight your way in, and you weren't allowed to run inland yet, and all that kind. Of, it's like just really stupid stuff that people did, and it was it was great. And it's Fortnite, right? Is one of the games I think that will not only go down in history as being not really a game changer, but like a ga a community changer because of the way people interact both online on websites and online on the game compared to a lot of the other games that aren't that, that aren't cons. So like PC games have always had this thing of you know the, some guy will create a server for a game and that server will have a website you can go over there and you can hang out and all that kind of stuff, whereas. On console, it never really took off. It was like people creating websites because there was not a lot of games, if any at all, that offered the ability to host your own server because it was all like handled by the companies and stuff. But Fortnite kind of did this thing where it's you know it's all cross compatible, and you could just hang out on random servers even on console, which I kind of like. But I think they've taken that out now. It kind of sucks. Yeah, um, I think it's, like, only for, like, competitive teams, as in, like, you'll ask them for, like, a server or whatever, and they'll give you uh, an address. I was going to do it when I was playing with my friends, but we didn't get that to work out. And, yeah, no, what you say about, like, um, having unique servers and, like, changing the rules of it, um, it's, it's something that makes games so much, a lot more interesting. Like, I remember, like, the last few times I played TF2, I'd just go on, like, Times 10 or Randomizer, mm. which aren't run by Valve. It's just, like, a fan-made mod, right? And, like... I know most mainstream games don't really allow you to do that. I know Call of Duty, you have to, like, invite people to to your yeah. lobby, especially on console. I know you, for Battlefield, you can rent server, and especially with one, like, around, I think it was, like, December, there were, like, people making, like, their own game modes, like, sidearms only, war pigeons or whatever, or there was um, another one, like, back to the basic 
use like bolt action rifles, right? Yeah. And that 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 kind of gives it it gives it more depth without the developers like necessarily having to go in, because like it's up to the player to do it. And like as much as like right now we can communicate with the developers, it's I think it's always better when it's like a user that has an idea because they've been playing the game like everyone else from the same point of view, and then they're like, oh, let's make this mod and let's make a website server and then yeah no i mean i used to be before i was on my ps4 here that i was just tapping uh, i used to be xbox right and i, I still love the xbox though microsoft is kind of butt fucked into oblivion but pc right pc games are probably the most robust in terms of things you can do so like you know the whole setting up of different servers and like editing the aspects of like a, a player character in that server so you could have a server where on, on like just a random game you could have a server where you have rapid fire unlimited ammo super jump kind of stuff and that, like that that always made funky game modes that you just played for a, for a mess around and then along came like halo where you could edit how much health you had how many like like you could basically have a game mode we had a game mode back on halo 2 me and my friends called the shredder which was one person played as an alien and they had like maximum overshield but they couldn't take a lot of bullet damage because they had to like stay invisible and and assassinate you but the people who were basically trying to survive the shredder had no shields whatsoever but like maximum weapon damage to the point where it was almost one shot kill and we loved that game mode and then you know, you could never really do anything like that on Call of Duty, and because so, games like that try and take themselves too seriously, and I think that's kind of a little problem with like FPS games like currently coming out. The not a lot of them are trying to be, I won't say fun, but not a lot of them are trying to push the envelope of the way you can do things. A lot of them are just trying to be like, oh yeah, no, we're gonna throw in like super realistic bullet drop and all this kind of, and it's like it's just trying to be too accurate whereas gaming on a whole is supposed to be you know like an escape from well reality basically and i don't know it's kind of going a little bit strange at the minute with fps games yeah no i definitely see what you're saying like um the thing is that like you have to find a balance in terms of games in terms of, like how because like the more realistic you make it the less fun it's going to be and the more of like um i would say almost bullshit factor there's gonna be because like if you look at it like in like four or three years ago like for like modern fps military settings like you had call of duty if you wanted more of a relax you know rather the like there wasn't many things that changed it wasn't very accurate but it was like more or less consistent right and then if you wanted a little bit more realism like bullet drop and more stuff you'd go to battlefield and then if you wanted, like, complete realism, you'd go to Arma, right? But the problem is, like, the more you go down the realism, the more, like, complicated it gets to, like, learn everything and all and, like, how many, like, different factors there are in killing some Arma, for example, like, I know the company, like, they made out a printout just so you knew all the keyboard can to do. Like, oh, yeah. Well, I, like, know, like, I used to play Arma 2 DayZ and just just trying to do my minor things on that with all the key bindings and stuff it, it was like trying to learn an entire new language but at the, at the same time right we armor i don't know how they've done it but they've managed they've managed to find as you said that balance between realism and kind of the kooky stuff you can do and i think that's all down to the fact that it's on you know it's on a computer so it's got that little bit of extra processing kind of capabilities that consoles never really have yeah i mean like the, the more realistic you make it the more system it's going to be and like yeah i mean like arma if you like look at it just like straightforward you're like oh it's like modern military shooter where you pra practically need permission to shoot right it, you, you wouldn't see it as fun but it's like that that amount of like realism it allows you for to like when you do stupid things it's funnier because you kind of i don't know if you've seen like soviet wombles video oh soviet now. wombles does some great videos yeah yeah so like if you just like took like gave the description of like the steam page of arma to someone they wouldn't like think like oh you can make like funny stuff. but like 
the thing is that with YouTube and and stuff, and mainly with the multiplayer, because like you can mess around so inconsequentially, it kind of like turns around seriousness of it and makes it so like you can just you know do do stupid things in an incredibly realistic setting, right? Yeah, cause uh, what what was the game now? Oh, there was a, there was a game that I, I like I only played super briefly, and it was it was a milsim game. I can't remember the name now, but from the get go, it tried to be as serious as it possibly could to the point where there were people online creating fictitious armies that you had to go through like an entire sign up and then like processing and weeks of training and then like all this like taking it to the extreme but people found the enjoyment of doing it all because it was i don't know it was like something you could never really do yourself without you know i mean like possibly risking serious injury or something like milsim games as like, hey you want to join the army yeah come on join it online experience it through your keyboard but not a lot of people would be like, oh, do you know, I want to join the army in real life because it comes with real life consequences. I, 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 that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. But yeah, no, I completely and utterly see how it can be. It can be kind of strange with like the way servers are kind of designed. Yeah, I mean, like the the thing with, um, as you said, it's. It, it brings all that realism and like, oh, it's realist stuff. But the thing, the nice thing with video games, in fact, is that you don't have to go far. I mean, like, that's the main reason they're so popular these days. It's like, you don't have to go all the way to an arcade. You can just go home, boot up your system and play, right? And like, if you kind of want to experience like the army feel, like you can just get like armor or whatever and you know, go through the sign up. Like, you won't actually have to go through like basic training and like sign yourself off for like, uh, I don't know what the how long the terms are in Britain, but, like, here they're, like, three or five years-ish. Uh, like, can... Oh, British Army, uh, you sign on for 12 years, you can leave immediately after four, but, yeah, like, basic training yeah. is uh, 24 weeks, I think, and then you move on to your secondary training, which is a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, like, if you really wanted, like, an experience to do that, time but like video games you boot it up you server and depending on like how popular it is you can just boot it up get right or just search for the perfect server and then really enjoy it yeah no i mean that's that's one reason i love video games is because you know you would never see me on a quad bike jump off the side of a cliff immediately open my parachute throw a couple of grenades spray a, ball, a bunch of ball, like not even possible but you know you just love some of the stuff that you can do in video games yeah i mean it's kind of like the, the combination of irrealism and realism yeah no i i get that like it's been i think since since way 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 back with I, right, I want to say the first FPS, real like the first real FPS was Doom. So all the way mm -hmm. like back then, it was you know shooting demons. You you went through a demon portal and shot up demons, and it was kind of like yeah. this weird fairy tale kind of story, but at the same time with the most kick ass you know BFG kind of guns and stuff, which made it really fun to play. And then you know Doom has Doom has never changed. If you if you look at every Doom game, it's always you turn up, you kick ass, and you, that's it. That That is the entire, I think when, you know, people come into the company that makes Doom and they go, all right, we're making a new Doom game. Uh, how do you want to do it? Uh, all right, we'll have him go here. Yeah, then what happens? Uh, then he kicks ass. What then? End of the game. It's like, all right, done. Whereas like, we call the duty. It's like, what's going to happen? All right, well, this guy over here is going to be betrayed by this guy over here because apparently 30 years ago when they were kids, this stuff happened and then they like had this massive rivalry. So we send in this Scottish guy with this other guy named Boris Sop and then all this other stuff. It's like, Call of Duty is just too complicated for some stuff. Awesome in some spots, but with storytelling, it's just absolutely stupid. Yeah. I mean, like, um, like Doom, I would say, like, a part just more like a horror game. It was basically just, like, a complete like you were almost god you could just kill and like rip and tear completely and it 
it made it so fun. Like, there is a story hidden, but you're not hearing the story. And, like, that that's like, the problem with Call of Duty. It's the fact that, like, it got, like, I don't know if you remember, like, Black Ops 2 story, but it was, like, made, like, at least people, like, thought it was really interesting. I thought it was. And then, like, they kind of took it too seriously. Because if you go back to, like, my personal favorite, Call of Duty 2, like, there's almost no story, right? It's just your normal soldier-ish doing basic soldier things. Like, you're pushing up with tanks. You're not, like, part of this elite squad. You're just, there's no, like, real attachment to the character. It's just, oh, this is your commissar. If he tells you, go there, go there, right? And, like, the fact that it wasn't, like, a deep story, it, it made it, like, so much more fun because it wasn't convoluted. It's just, like, get to the action, get your briefing on what to do, and get back to the action. Instead of, oh, here's a cutscene. In Black Ops 4, you have to basically do research to understand the story. Do you know what? I think that's why I think that's why people loved uh, Modern Warfare so much. Because if you really, 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 really look at the story of Modern Warfare, it's literally you as Soap or as McTavish, whoever you end up playing as, you're just on basically a revenge mission. There's no massive like plot story about it. There's no like Steven Spielberg-esque like, kind of backstory or whatever. You get a mission which is the backstory for why Price wants to kill this guy, and it's the best mission in the fucking game, you know, with, uh, you know, 40, 000, 40 million... No, 40,000 people used to live here now. It's a ghost town, which is what everybody, like, quotes. That was the best mission of the game. And then, you know, the ending mission is... He slides you the gun, like, the ending part of the mission, at the, on the last one, he slides... You know, Price slides you the gun, and you shoot yeah. the guy. And at no point in that... Am I going, wait a minute, I can't follow the story because, like, you were doing this, and then you were doing that, and then you were doing this, and halfway through it, I mean, because you, you do, you, 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 you jump between the SES and the Rangers, but halfway through it, they blow up the Rangers, so, like, it doesn't really matter anymore, and then the Rangers and the SES become one unit with the, uh, the like, heavier guy from the, S, uh, from the Rangers who joins the SES, and then you just go and kill the bad guy. That that's that's it. It's like a James Bond movie. You something bad happens, you are sent in to kick the shit out of them. It goes a little bit wrong, so you go a little bit rogue, like you know they kind of do. And then you kick the shit out of the bad guy. And then there's like you know sometimes you lose a friend or two on the way, like uh, Gaz or whatever gets shot. But then you know comes back in Modern Warfare Two as Ghost, which was the stupidest. Plot, plot twist in air quotes that could possibly ever have been done but that is why people i think that is why people loved modern warfare and i think that's why people loved um world at war because world at war story was basically just shoot nazis that's that's the entire story for that shoot nazis and get to berlin yeah but it's like yeah. now i right i played uh, which was it? Was it Ghost Protocol? I, I don't know. It's the one where you're in. You start off in space. I can't remember which one's that. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I I played Ghost Protocol because I was like, you know, it it sounds pretty awesome and stuff. You you're in space, and I personally I love space. And then it's just like, oh yeah, look out the window. There's the uh, there's Odin. He's gonna. And I'm like, all right, you've just taken something that was a real like premise, like somewhat something they tried to think up, and you've made it. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then it's like, you know, it blows up the thing and kills your dad, the main character's dad and his brother or something. Or like they, the brother survives. I can't, I can't really remember Ghost Protocol. But it was like, you know, people in space and then it just stuck you on the ground and you had a bit of fun. And I'm pretty sure you also had a dog. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a little no, bit it's strange. Like... Yeah, it's story. Into it. Yeah, I never, re I never really got the story of Ghost Protocol, because it was like, the someone builds, I think it's the Americans, or someone builds this, uh, basically what we had here, or like was theorised here, I think it was called the Zeus Project, which was, which was also in G.I. Joe 2, uh, which is basically a satellite that doesn't use conventional weapons, it fires, a, I think it's a cobalt-shaped rod that causes yeah. nuclear levels of destruction without any of the fall, which... I, lo I personally, I love that kind of weapon, and if I was a multi-millionaire evil genius, I would build that weapon and hold the entire world ransom yeah. because, you know, I could, I could get rid of stupid countries, uh, some that shall not be... Or I could pinpoint someone in a stupid country doing a stupid job, 
possibly it begins with an A and the guy running it begins with a D, but I'm not really going to get into that. Uh, but yeah, like, it, it was a really interesting thing. And then they just kind of blew it out of proportion a little bit with like they fired the like the rod fires at the ground and i'm pretty sure i'm pretty much like levels the entirety of los angeles or whether the guy is visiting his dad and i was like right okay no you kind of just blowing it out of proportion now but you know it it, it ghost protocol tried to take the call of duty kind of gameplay style but threw yeah. a little bit of a twist on it with uh, you know like a dog and in space and all this other kind of stuff and it was it was nice to play, but it was just a little bit too silly. Yeah, like, I don't know. I didn't like it. It, it doesn't feel like you're uh, you cut it out on me there, my friend. But I think oh. I get the gist of what you're saying. You're saying like you didn't really hate on it because it was uh, still kind of a decent game. Yeah, like. The st like to make a good story, like I think World at War arguably has the best one because it's like pretty upfront, right? It's like more or less basic history, like as you say, you just go forward. But like, there's almost like the story of like your squad, you know, like in World at War when like Miller dies or I, I forget, like when, when your when Chernov dies, for example, like it gives like a story of like your group, but it's not like hard to follow, right? It's like oh, he dies were like it pisses you off you're gonna kill harder now right and like even even with like further games like there is more of a story but it's like not necessary to enjoy the game it's like oh i like this game i want to know more right and like then they're like oh let's like for halo for example um i know there was like books or whatever but you didn't need to read the books to like understand like it just shoot aliens in the face and melee the fuck out of them, right? Yeah, that you don't. That need, is like... pretty, Halo, right? Halo is pretty much that. You've you've just a lot of people will disagree with you saying, "Oh no, Halo is all about you know humanity and all this kind of stuff." No, Halo is literally, "Oh look, there's a bunch of ugly aliens with weird predator style faces. Let's shoot them in the head and punch the little things in the back." That's that is Halo right there. Yeah, like I think I don't know if it was like three for three or whatever, but like. The, the extra story is nice and all, like, oh, it's, like, the fall of humanity or whatever. But, like, the fact that they brought it up, like, oh, this is, like, these are gods and there's, like, a meaning to life or whatever. Yeah, that, it, it, that was 343. Like, 343 three took yeah, Halo, like, bent it over, and fucked it. Yeah, like, it, n no one asked for this, right? Like, it, like, maybe on its own it would be great and interesting and stuff, but it, it's not Halo. Like, the first one I played was Reach, and it was, like, basically to, f like, help people get off of this planet and, like, kill the bastards right see and right. like no I, before before we move on we actually need to cover that of what you right you said the first halo game you played was reach right yeah this this is something that people might people who've played halo might not understand because if people have played halo from halo one they will know the story yeah. right reach takes place before mm -hmm. literally like a couple of days before halo one and yeah. It is probably the best for no one who's ever played. For people who've never played Halo, that is probably the best game to start off because you get an introduction to the bad guys. So you get an introduction to the Covenant. Mm -hmm. You get an introduction to Spartans. You don't really get a lot of Forerunner style aliens from distant pasts and all like that. You don't get a lot of that, which is good. And the entire premise is this world is fucked. Get off it. And in the process, you get really pissed off at the Covenant because they slowly kill off your team in in ways that, you know, are, are epic, but at the same time, you don't mm. want to see some of these people die. That is the best one to fucking get into if you want to learn about Halo. And, and Halo, yeah, Halo itself does have books about the extended universe, which mm. the thing is, the books came after the games. So the games yeah. came out, and then people were like, oh, I want to know a little bit more about you know, this one guy. So we had a mm -hmm. book about that. Or like, I want to, what happened to all the other Spartans? Because there was all, the, there was like hundreds made. And it's like, all right, here's a couple of books about a couple of Spartan teams and stuff. And it's like, all right, I want to know more about this. And yeah. Bungie, Bungie did it really good. Because have you only played Reach or have you played all of them? Oh, uh, I've played all of them. Yeah. I haven't played like the Halo Wars one, but I've like, I, I know the more or less of the story. See, the, right. Yeah, so you right, you know the story. Right? Halo One is basically you're on a ship, it gets shit, it gets shot to shit, it crashes, and then you learn about Forerunner tech. Right, that is Halo One is the setup. Right. Yeah. Halo Two 
is the best one <laughs> because it's like, oh, they've turned up at Earth. Let's kick the crap out of them. And then, oh, no, we find another ancient doomsday weapon. What could we possibly do? And then Halo 3 is, as it said in the in the thing, finishing the fight where you basically kick the crap out of this crazy religious sect that flies around space. That... Yeah. That is that is all you need. It's like it's like the first three Star Wars. The first three Star Wars are perfect, right? They tell the story. There mm-hmm. we go. Everything that came after that, though it is a nice thing to have, it just kind of oversaturated with all this backstory. Like Halo Four is like, oh, you get you you find this big sphere and you get pulled into this arc and it's like all right we didn't really like the didact and all you didn't really need to know this kind of stuff but in the process of yeah it it, it was good to play but you didn't really need it and then they tried to mm-hmm. tip it on its head with Halo 5 where they were like oh yeah master chief's now the bad guy and we're going to send you know the black guy after him and it's like all right okay whatever sure okay it was a nice thing you know the whole team chasing after it was nice and then they really fucked it up where it was like Oh yeah, Cortana died at the end of Halo 4. Oh no, it turned out she never died. She actually disappeared into some sort of subspace background radio network where she became God, basically. And it's like, right, okay, now you just now three four three is just taking it too far. But yeah. I, I need to know, did you play Halo or DST? Oh uh, yes, I did. What did you think of it? Like, it it was nice, as in like it gave you a different view on it, right? So it was like. You saw the soldiers as, like, even more disposable, and even as yourself, like, I think the damage models are even different. Like, you, it was good as in it gave you a different perspective without, like, ruining it. Like, it, it still felt like Halo, just different. Like, you knew you weren't a Spartan, right? And whenever, like, your buddies died, you still had, like, a bit of anger boost or whatever. And, like, the fact that it let you play more as, like, the frontline soldier instead of, like, the Spartan, it let you see more of, like, the, the Halo, you know? I have asked people before what they think of ODST, and pretty much everybody has just gone, it's shit. And I think the problem with with people just saying that ODST is crap is because ODST did something that Halo never did, which was basically it made you vulnerable. Because you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't stand, you know, like as a Spartan, you couldn't basically just stand in front of a tank and like beat the crap out of it. Can't do that as an yeah. ODST. And it was, it was a really, it, that was, LDST was uh, like Bungie's last kind of like, pro, it was, it, it was a nice homage to what they should have done in some aspects. And I don't know yeah. if you did this while playing Halo, but I know I personally did this. I tried to save every Marine, every ODST, every, every person who worked for the UNSC, I tried to save as I played Halo 1, 2, and 3. If they had to die in a, in a, cutscene or whatever i would like be really fucking upset because i loved them and when i played odst i was like i am out of every game it ain't not just halo but out of every game i've ever played that has you know a a massive game span it's like several game spanning stories and all that kind of stuff i've always wanted to be an odst because they are just they're like the, the pinnacle of what people in the army like it's like you are basically a space marine because you 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 you, you feet you basically as they say you fall feet first into hell and it's like the most yeah. ballsy kind of thing and then to play as that and realize that they are not just people who drop in out of orbit and kick shit but they're also like assassins in a way was really nice to play and yeah. the fact that you were vulnerable and had to discover what happened to your team was awesome it was basically i think it was a movie. It wasn't a game or a TV show. It was a movie about, like, what what could happen. It, it's like, you know, when you watch a war movie and it's like, oh, yeah, no, this has just happened to this unit over there, but we're f- too busy following Tom Hanks trying to rescue Matt Damon or whatever. I've always wanted yeah. to know, but what happened, like, did someone survive from that unit? What happened? And you, in ODST, you play as that guy, which is why I really yeah. like that game. No, yeah, like, the the saving the characters part, like, I'll get on to that after. But, like, the, that's something I haven't tried, but, like, it, it's something you kind of want to do at the same time. And, like, the fact that um it lets you see, like, for example, like, what happened to June at the end of Reach. Like, personally, I didn't really, wasn't too interested in that, but, like, I'm sure people would have loved to have a game where it's, like, you play as June, try and get Halsey out, right? Or, like, it, th- that's a problem. It's, like, 
what a halo does nicely as you said it's like the first game is like introduction second is climax third is trying off loose ends it does it really nicely and like i think like odst was just a way to tie off another one like it wasn't like a loose end it's just like a something that people might have wanted to know more about as you said and they just like you know kind of they found a way to let players kind of explore that. Well, um, yeah, if, as... if you, if you, I just want to cut you off a quick second. If you think about it, right, Halo ODST mm -hmm. takes place about halfway through Halo 2. So, like, as you yeah. see at the beginning, you know, you drop in and the ship flies away. That's when they find the second Halo in the Halo 2 game. I, when I played Halo 2, always wanted to know, wait a minute, what just, like, what happened, what happened when the ship jumped away and it blew up? Like, what happened? Like, I want to know yeah. this stuff. And it's, that's where ODST comes in. I think it is a good way of like, it's it, it's filling in plot holes basically, and it's what I really like because you learn what happens to New Mombasa and like when you play Halo Three, and you see that big dome thing, well that big dish that opens a portal to the Ark. You're like, yeah. but wait a minute, where the fuck did that come from? And then like Halo ODST fills that in, which is why it was a really good game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like um. Tying up like loose ends, it's something like I find like some will try like make it uh, or filling in plot holes. They like to put in like books. Um, like th this is kind of my side coming up. But what I what I noticed a lot with like Japanese stuff is like I don't know if like it's, if it's like they're based on it or whatever. But like if it if it kind of does well, they're gonna add like or like a not like a sequel, but like a a prequel, like a side story that kind of explains like what's going on here that you never got to see. And th and that's something I really like. And as, as you said, like. ODST, it kind of, it, it fills in a hole that never really needed to be filled, but it was anyways, and it's great, right? Well, it was, it was like a, it wasn't a hole that needed to be filled, but it was like, yeah, it wasn't. It, it was something that kind of ticked over in the back of your mind, like, but uh, you know, what happened yeah. to all the people? And like, it was something that wasn't, it wasn't story breaking, but it added, yeah, no, it not. added just that little bit that made the story a little bit more fuller. Yeah, it it gave like a, as I said like a different perspective, and then it makes it, it it makes you feel a bit more connected or like, um maybe like I wouldn't say like value the Marines' lives more, but like like if you ever if you're ever someone interested in like the actual people, it, it kind of fills it in more. It gives it more depth, right? Yeah, it it gives you, it gives you more. I think when you play as as like if you're in a game and you play as like a, just a bog standard soldier, it gives you perspective on i won't say war because you know war can be like really devastating to people and stuff but it gives yeah. you that little bit of perspective of one like what war might be like like with the medal of honor series and the original call mm -hmm. of duties it gave you that insight because they were all based on true events and all this kind of stuff so it, yeah it gave you the insight of what it was like and like from it you touched a little bit of history. You had a bit of fun while doing it. It was, you know, you shot people and mm -hmm. it was fun that you're killing Nazis and all that. But you, you gained a bit of perspective, not just as on history, but in, in like life a little bit. And yeah, when you played Halo, you were this seven foot tall walking spaceship tank that didn't really give a mm -hmm. shit and could punch through doors. And you were like, all right, it kind of takes me out of it. But then like you'd see the NPCs fighting alongside you and like you, you would be like, wow, that's like those people are not super soldiers they have no armor to protect them they're like they can't bench press a truck but they're stood right yeah. next to this seven foot tall dude kicking ass and then when you played as odst it it gave you that insight because you know you'd never played you'd never seen through the eyes of a marine before so it, it it gave you the insight of what it was like to be that guy on the field next to the seven foot tall guy and going oh my god you know this guy's here he's throwing people around i can't do that but i'm still mm -hmm. going to like kick ass with that guy and it was a nice it was a nice thing with this kind of like sat just there in in the middle of the halo game that you you put you spent three to four well it's like what five games or six games now playing as a yeah. as a massive punching machine and then there's just that one game where you play as a human and it's it's really awesome yeah no definitely like this is something uh, that i think like we need to uh, well not we right now but i mean like they need to talk about more it's like the value of characters and like as you said like the fact that um i don't know if you knew if i don't know if the skull was in like the other games but i know in like reach you have this skull named like it's it's like a bunch of letters or whatever and activates like rare like rare voice line so like oh you'll, yeah you'll no that that is in um i'm pretty sure that's Reach. actually in every halo game 
it's, oh yeah, I can't remember the name of the skull, but yeah, it gives it gives unique dialogue to uh, NPCs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you could like um you could trade like weapons with the. Uh... Like, I, I know if, if ever you gave her a rocket launcher enough attempts, like, a female marine, she'll be like, oh, I, I don't date seven-foot-tall armored killing machines or whatever. But, like, the, the fact that there's, like, tech, like, there's the lines, like, oh, this is for reach or whatever, and, like, the other ones, yeah. or, like, um, uh, take that, you're coming in back. Like, the fact that, like, they have more voice lines, it makes them seem more human, and, like, it's more of a motivation to, like, push against them. Like, the, the, the thing is, like, it's something you'd need in war, right? You you don't want like your soldiers to like yeah, give up and like and you against. It's not actually, really necessary. You've brought up a really good point because I, I as you were talking about that, I was just thinking like I was thinking right, Call of Duty, yeah, yeah. Call of Duty has no unscripted dialogue. It's all scripted. I was like, anything else got unscripted dialogue in it? And I realized there are no real kind of first person shooter games outside of Halo. There might be one or two that I don't know about. But none of them mm-hmm. have that sense of uh, like brotherhood or companionship or, or co- uh, com- uh, comradeship, where you know, like I like I always do. If I see a marine in Halo with a pistol, I will give him one of my weapons so he's a more effective tool, and I will go, "Hey, thanks, Chief," yeah. or anything like that. And then I'm like, "Do you know what? You're an awesome dude. I want to keep you alive now." So I spend, I like I get invested, but in like Call of Duty. You, you swap a weapon with someone and that's it. They they don't really say anything. They're just like, oh, 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 there you go. And it's like, oh, fine, yeah. thanks. But in Halo, all the all the side dialogue was kind of brilliant, especially even from like the alien perspective. If you had if you snuck up on some aliens yeah. and just listened to them talk, they'd just be talking about random stuff and you were like, oh, that's really funny. It's like in Halo 3, on the final mission, you can find a grunt just before you do the leap into the ship. You can find a grunt that just talks and he's like insane. Or you can, or you can. I think in Halo Two, you can sneak upon a brute as he's taking a piss. Stuff like that is not in other games. Yeah, and it's like kind of a fun Easter. Egg. Yeah, it is. It's like, I think if it gives them more depth. Yeah, in I'd see because I haven't really played much of the modern Call of Duty thing. I think the last thing I played, oh, would have been. Uh, the it's, it, it might, actually might have been black. It was Black Ops Two, the one with the transit zombie map. Yeah, yeah, no, that was Black Ops Two. Yeah, that was the last proper Call of Duty I played, <sighs> and that wasn't. I couldn't really get invested in it. I got, I mean, it was it was nice to see, you know, what happened uh, through. Uh, what's his name now? The Russian guy from from. Uh. Well, I mean, basically, you see, you see who die, you see what happens to your guy, uh, the Russian guy from World at War. You know, you see him die. Oh yeah, Reznov. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, no, you see the other guy die. Um, the guy you play as, uh, you know, in on the game. Oh, Dimitri. Yeah, um, you, you see, like, yeah, that was the original. You see through, you see through the. Oh, was it the original? Yeah, there in the original, there's like Reznov and like I think. Where, I, th- I thought it was in Black Ops Two that you you played the mission. Where you were, in, you went to the Arctic ship, and then like no, the, no, that was Black Ops. Oh, right, okay. No, it's because like uh, the two of them are. Yeah. If I may have like a, actually, you you know what? Finish your point because I I want to go on a. Yeah, you're gonna Black go on Ops a tangent. Too. No, I mean it like, Black Ops. Well, whichever Black Ops it was, where you you saw what happened to your previous character, that, was like, watching Dimitri die. The guy you played as, watching him die, was like yeah. I think the most emotional thing i'd seen out of a call of duty game in a long time and it was it wasn't tear jerking but it actually really pissed me off when he died to that gas because you you know he was there you tried to save him you couldn't save him you were like "Mm, that's really fucking annoying and then you got super pissed at the bad guys so murdering the guy at the end of the game was just like it was like a nirvana kind of it was mm, it was beautiful and it's like since then I've never really been invested in the story of like any Call of Duty game, really. Yeah. Um. What? What you you bring up a very good point. I don't know if there's like a name for it. I'm actually maybe planning on doing this in a video at some point. Um. But like, uh, the kind of like, I I don't know if like anger is the right word because like it's just a video game, but it like it can get you like really pissed. Like in Black Ops Two, there's this like 
I think it's arguably, for me at least, it's the best moment in the series. It's you shoot this guy with a bag and then you walk up to him. And then the, the guy you kind of had as like a hostage starts laughing. And then you hear the music. So your character sprints over and the guy you just shot was your buddy. Then the main guy, bad guy shoots out your kneecap so you can't do anything. You can just like jab, like punch his boot and all. And it makes you really pissed off and want to take revenge, right? And like it's that I don't know if there's like a name for it, but like that anger is like really hard to replicate in any other game. Like in World at War, like whenever they killed like Miller and stuff, like I would, I would like it, it was so infuriating. I would like anytime I could get a flamethrower, I'd like purposely go out and burn as many as I can just to get like that that feeling of revenge, right? Because they like the the way he was killed was like so scummy. And same thing with Chernov, like. He, he was, like, throughout the main story of World of War, he was a bit of a coward. Then the one time he's courageous, he gets absolutely, like, burnt. So, like, it, it's that, that kind of anger and that revenge that you're chasing for. I think that's what we need to see. In games, and, like, the thing, it's, like, the modern Call of Duties don't really have that anymore because they don't know how to attach you to a character. Hmm. I think, I th you know, I think this, because this is going to be a good good thing to end it on, and this is going to be, like, my final message. I think if you want to make games that are not just pandering to your audience of like, you want to play a game that's just shooting people, fine, there you go. If you want to make a, I won't say groundbreaking, but if you want to make something goddamn close to it, you have to make us as the player who is invested in this in this character and the, the company that you're running with and all this kind of stuff. If at some point you're, one of your teammates or whatever is brutally murdered as in like you know like as you said you shoot that you shoot the guy in the bag and it turns out it's your mate and then you knee capture and you can't yeah. do anything if you that is what you need you need to basically install a couple of things in in a person throughout a game you have to install like a feeling of friendship and all that kind of stuff between you and you and your comrades you then have to mm. install hope so like stick us in a situation where oh shit we're all gonna die but you know we're going to try and persevere and get out of this then you have to basically put us through grief where we get out of that yeah. situation but it turns out oh no the, there was a guy still here and he shoots the guy we were really invested in and then from that mm -hmm. you get probably the best finale to a game ever because you are you're like 110 percent behind ending everybody in sight it is it's yeah it's that that is what you need in the game you don't just need all right here's a bunch of cool guns with fire lasers and stuff uh, have i here's like some cool multiplayer stuff if you want a game that will win you awards and shit you need you need what is it like one two uh, four things hope like salvation well no five things actually mm -hmm. I, I can't remember the order i did it was like hope you know investment grief yeah and uh, you need all of you need if you don't have these in a game and i haven't seen them in many games recently but if if you don't if you have them in a game you'll probably win fucking awards through your the wazoo they'll come out of the woodwork yeah you have to like you have to cause that kind of... yeah um i i know like i'm just gonna make this short but like that's something like i this is my weeb side but, but like find that that modern ish the japanese media does really well like jap like i wouldn't like the, the example i'm thinking of is uh, no, I don't know if you know it, but like the, it invests you in characters and you can interact with, like, grow closer to whoever you want. And then there's like a 90% that they're yeah. going to get killed. And you're going to, and that, that motivates you to like avenge him or get behind, him, like, why they were killed. And stuff. Yeah. If it's like, I, I love, I mean, I haven't really played, just to really quickly finish this off, I haven't really played many Japanese games where I've come across that, but the ones I have. I've like it's all it's always the guy I'm closest to as a human so like like my real life persona if there's a guy like that in a game or a movie or whatever I'm really invested in that guy and that guy always dies and I get really yeah, I pissed know. off it's yeah. like it I don't know if it's become like a not really a meme but like it's kind of become a cliche where the yeah. guy who would have been a, hum a decent human being is immediately killed off for the guy who's like, oh my god, I just bench pressed like 300 pounds and fucked pussy all night. It's like, no, you don't want that guy. To you want that guy to die. That is like the jock yeah. guy. I want that guy to die. I want someone who's like well-rounded character and stuff 
to live. It's like when they cancel TV shows that were just for... Like, we'll cancel a really good TV show to put on 15 hot people on an island that are just talking to each other and fucking. It's like, that's not TV. That's just porn on... It's like, come on, fucking don't do this to me. It's like... And that's kind of what I've seen in... Like, all the protagonists in games that I've seen are jocks. None of them are, like, fucking sensible guys who were like, oh, we're in this situation where we've got to do this. Well, it's better not do it and try and find a different way around it. Yeah. Oh, but... I see what you mean. Yeah, I think that is a good place to actually end this yeah, podcast. I don't want to keep you. Oh, dude, I've, I've actually had a buttload of fun talking about this stuff. I think everybody yeah. listening has probably got some stuff to say on this. So, I will say this. If you've actually managed to make it to, like, the 50-minute mark, which I'm pretty sure what we're at, even though we've been going for 55 minutes, if you've made it this far and you have anything to say on it, please go ahead, stick it in the comment section down below, because I would be super stoked to hear whatever your uh, views are on that. And I'm pretty sure Spitfire would like to know that stuff as well. Yeah. Um, have a... If you... If... Yeah, do you, wanna, do you want to plug yourself? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, um, I have a I have a channel of my own. It's named the Cartridge. I don't know if he's, I can give him the link. I'm oh, it's okay. I'll stick the link in the description. All right, so make sure you check that out. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about like the topics of like Black Ops Two and like character anger. But yeah, as he said, just put in what you want, what you think in the comments. Um, I know at least from my perspective, a small YouTuber being getting your guys' feedback and ideas is great. So don't be afraid. Um, thanks for have, having me, Captain. Hey, no problem. It was actually really decently fun to have you on. Yeah, let's maybe do this again. Hell yeah. Well, it's the goodbye from me. What about you, Spitfire? Well, goodbye, everyone. Have a good day. <laughs> thanks for coming on, guys. <laughs> you know the drill. Like, share, and subscribe. But until then, as always, stay awesome.